In this question, we have a yo-yo spinning um, at a given omega um, with a given tension. And we're not sure if it's either slipping or rolling without slipping on the ground, so we have to test that. But we are asked to find um, what the um, angular acceleration and linear acceleration are of the yo-yo. Um, we're also given all the friction coefficients and um, the angle theta. So, as I mentioned, um, there's two cases for this question, which we, we don't know which one is occurring, either slipping or no slipping at the bottom here, um, where the yo-yo contacts the ground. Uh, so we have, um, we're given the angle theta, and we have the following forces. So we have a tension force that's pulling G um, up along uh, that line with uh, in the theta angle. So that's that we're going to call T, tension T. Um, we also have um, the weight of the yo-yo creating uh, FG downwards. Um, and then we have two more forces, the normal force and the friction force um, at the contact point here. So the normal force points up and the friction force um, is gonna to point towards the right. And we're gonna call this F of F. And the direction of the friction force is given by this direction of omega. So since this is slipping this way, the friction force counteracts that um, direction. So that's why it's pointing towards the right. So we have four forces. Now, um, with this, we can take our sum of forces uh, in X and Y direction and then take our sum of moments. So I'm actually going to draw in the coordinate system over here. X is towards the right, Y is upwards, and rotation is positive counterclockwise. So given these forces, um, we're going to do our sum of forces, X, Y, and our sum of moments. So sum of force in the X direction is going to be equal to M times AX. I also forgot to do the kinetic diagram, so we have an acceleration only in the rex, x direction, no, y, no acceleration in the y direction because it doesn't detach. Um, and we also have alpha, which I'm going to assume is going in this direction, but could be going in the opposite direction. So this ax is just simply going to be a because there is no acceleration in the y direction. Okay, And if we implement this, we get um, force of friction. Uh, minus tension times the cosine of theta um, is going to be equal to m times a. Okay, then we can do a sum of force in the y direction, and this is going to be equal to zero because a y is zero. So um, this equation yields t times sine of theta uh, minus f g, which is the gravitational force, plus n is equal to zero. And then we have the sum of moments, and we're going to take the point uh, G um, because of convenience. So if we take point G here, um, this T force, which is slanted at an angle, goes away. FG and N all go away, so we only have F of F. So it's much simpler to do that calculation. And this is going to be equal to IG alpha uh, so we get the following, um, f of f times the radius of the yo-yo um, is equal to i g alpha. Okay, And we do not know i g, but we are given the radius of gyration, so we can calculate uh, i g based on the radius of gyration. So on this side here, i g is equal to uh, m k g squared. And this is equal to uh, 0 0.2 kilograms times 0 0.02 meters squared, which is equal to 0 0.00008 kilograms meters squared. And this is going to be IG. Okay, so we actually do have IG. Uh, so given the sum of moments, um, we can now test the two cases. Uh, so we either have 
rolling without slipping or we have rolling with slipping. And the difference between the two is that there's two different um, friction coefficients um, in each case. Uh, so we have to pick which one works best. And um, when we test, if our hypothesis doesn't match the results we get, then obviously that case is impossible. And we have to either test the other one or ensure that the other one works. Okay, so we're going to first test rolling without slipping. So case one. Rolling without slipping. So what we have to enforce for this case is um, that since there's no slipping, um, we have that the force of friction, f of f, must be lower than or equal to mu s times n. Mu s being the static friction coefficient um, because um, there's no slipping, so it's static, okay? Um, and this ensures that um, this friction force here um, is created by this normal force and it has to be lower than or maximum at max equal to uh, the normal force times that static friction coefficient. Okay, um, so once that is ensured, um, then we can, if that holds, then we have rolling without slipping. And to test the, um, to test this, we're just going to plug in the numbers um, and see what we get. Okay, um, so we can relate um, alpha and ag with the following equation. Uh, ag, so this is essentially a, um, ag in the x direction, which is essentially a, is equal to alpha cross r, right? And if we solve this, we get, since we know r, um, because r is 0 0.03 meters, um, we get negative 0 0.03 alpha in the i hat direction. Okay, so a has to be negative 0 0.03 alpha in the i hat direction, and this is because um, this point we're relating this point here, which doesn't have any linear acceleration, to um, the linear acceleration a of this point here. Okay. Um, so this is essentially relating a, which is agx, um, to alpha. And we're, again, it's going to be in the negative i hat direction um, with respect to alpha. All right. So once we have that, we can actually plug everything into the equations and uh, solve. Um, because for this case, um, again, we're given t and we're given this theta angle. Um, and we can solve for all of the other unknowns. So let's do that. So this equation here, we can um, solve for f, well, relates f of f and alpha, so it's still not a full equation. Um, but in um, this equation here, we can directly solve for n. So we can plug that in. So n is going to be equal to negative 0 0.4 newtons uh, times sine of 60 degrees plus 0 0.2 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to 1.62 uh, newtons. So that's n. Uh, now, once we have n, and then we have this equation relating alpha and f of f, um, we can uh, solve for f of f from this equation here f of f is equal to um, 
zero point zero zero two six six alpha. I just simplified everything. Um, so we have we solved for n fully, and we solved for f of f in terms of alpha. Okay, and then from our third equation, we can relate f of f and alpha together. Okay, um, so we're going to plug one into each other um, to actually solve for uh, the force of friction. Um, so with our last equation, we have f of f times r, which is 0 0.03 meters, is going to be equal to 0 0.0000. 8 kilograms meter squared times alpha. And so when we combine uh, this, I'm going to call number 1, I'm going to call number 2, 1 and 2, we get the following. Uh, F of F is equal to 23.08 newtons. Um, and um, we've already solved for n. So now we can test this hypothesis over here because okay, we have mu s and that's equal to um, 0 0.3. So if we test that, we get so f of f, which is equal to, uh, we said, 23.08 newtons, um, is going to be smaller than or equal as we need it to be uh, of mu s which is 0 0.3 times 1.62 newtons okay and if we get this we get that if we test this we get that this does not hold this does not work it's not smaller than it's actually bigger than so um, this concludes that uh, we cannot have rolling without slipping. There must be slipping. Okay, so that leads us to case number two. rolling with slipping. And I'll put a star next to the cases. Okay, so rolling with slipping here, instead of using the uh, static friction coefficient, we can use the uh, kinetic friction coefficient. And here, um, what holds is that uh, the force of friction is equal to mu k times n. Okay, so we can directly plug this back into these equations over here. Um, and this force of friction goes away, um, and this force of friction goes away. We're solving for alpha, the normal force, and the acceleration. Three equations, three unknowns. We can directly solve for everything and um, get values. So this is what we get. 0.4. Newtons times sine of 60 degrees minus 0 0.2. This is the um, mass kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared plus n is going to be equal to zero. So here we can directly solve for n, which is equal to 1.62 newtons, okay? Um, then we have our second equation, or the next equation, 0 0.00008 alpha is equal to um, 1.62 newtons, which is our normal force, times 0 0.2 kilograms 
times 0 0.03 meters. And here we can directly solve for alpha. That is equal to 1 to 1.2 radians per second squared. And lastly, we can solve for the linear acceleration A. So we have 0 0.2 kilograms times A is equal to 0 0.2 kilograms times 1.62 newtons uh, minus uh, 0 0.4 newtons times cos of 60 degrees. And here we solve for A, which is equal to 0 0.615. 6.6, or 6.2 actually, 6.2 meters per second squared. And so our final answers are alpha is equal to 1 to 1.2 radians per, sec per second squared, and A is equal to 0 0.62 meters per second squared. And these are our final answers.